G'day and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I want to go through a set of tests that you can do to figure out whether you're hypermobile. But what's really important with this video is that having a label of hypermobility or being super flexible doesn't necessarily have to be a curse. Because what I want to go through at the end of this video is I want to touch on a really important concept that you have to take with you in order to maximize the potential of not developing any pain or injury or dysfunction uh, down the track. So the testing that we're going to go through is a series of five tests called the Baton Scale. So the Baton Scale is a series of five hypermobility tests that we've sort of been doing for the best part of 30 years that we tend to use to give us a scalable ability to understand how hypermobile you might actually be. And it's important to touch on quickly that being positive with any one of these tests doesn't mean that you necessarily have a problem. It just means that you are consistently more hyper-flexible than the next person. So the first test that we want to get into involves your little finger. And the idea with this test is to do it officially. You want to have your elbows bent at 90 degrees with your palms flat on the ground. And the testing essentially shows that if you bend that little finger back and you can get to 90 degrees, then you get one point on the scale. So for me, um, I can't essentially get to 90 degrees, I'm probably about 45 degrees, so I would get a zero. But if you can get to, to 90 degrees straight up and down, give yourself a point. You can do it both sides, give yourself two points. Now the second test involves your thumb. So reaching out in front of you with your palm down and everything in a line, you basically want to bend your thumb back to see if we can get your thumb to touch your forearm. So again, for me, I'm probably about 45, 50, 60 degrees here. I can't quite get there. If you are hypermobile, if you're more flexible, you might find that that thumb gets directly back to your forearm, which would then be a point. If you can do it on both sides, we expect that to be two points. Now the third test involves your elbows. And the way that we do this test is that we have your arm dead straight out to the side with your palm up. We wanna basically see whether you can hyperextend your elbow beyond 10 degrees. So how this would look is that if we look at your arm bone and your forearm, for me, I think I'm pretty much at 180 degrees going straight through. But if you found that your forearm dipped an extra 10 degrees or more than 10 degrees past that, then we would give you a score of one to suggest that you might be hypermobile on that joint. And obviously doing the same thing on the other for a total of two points. And then the fourth test in the Baton scale revolves your knees. So we need you to stand up. And essentially with this one, what we're looking for is we're looking to see how much hyperextension you have in your lower leg. So again, looking at me from the side, uh, I might be hyperextending a little bit, but the idea is that from your femur, your thigh bone, straight down the side of your shin, do you see an extra 10 degrees or more of knee extension where the knee sort of wants to flick back further, creating that extra degree? Now, again, if you can get beyond 10 or so degrees, we'll give you a score of one on either side for a total of two. And the final test in the Baton scale suggests that if you can stand up with your feet together and your knees straight, the test is essentially just to see if you can get your palms flat on the ground. So for me, I can get my palms flat on the ground, but as you can see with the rest of the testing, uh, I don't necessarily uh, pick up any positivity in any of the tests. So for me, I've probably got maybe a one out of nine. And with this scoring on the Baton scale, all of the research suggests that anything between zero to three on the scale is considered relatively normal, whatever that is. If you can get sort of four and above, obviously the closer you get to nine, the more hyper flexible we would expect you to be. And I'd be interested to know if you let me know down in the comments below what you got out of nine and whether that correlates or resonates with you in terms of how flexible you feel you might be. But following on from this, if you're someone who has got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine out of nine on the bait and scale, or you've been given that label of hypermobility, it's really important to understand one simple thing. It automatically doesn't necessarily mean that you are gonna have pain, damage, or injury down the track. But what it does absolutely mean is you must develop some muscular control and strength of that hypermobility. So the number one tip that you've got to take away from this video is that being hyperflexible can, in a lot of ways, be considered a superpower, where your ability to get into certain positions or express movement in a certain way is potentially far superior than most other people. But if you don't have control of that range and stability at your joints through that range, then you may then be at more risk of developing some joint issues or some tissue dysfunction or something like that down, down the track. And what that basically looks like is if you're someone who is super flexible through your elbows, it's really important that if you hyperextend, that you develop the strength through that hyperextension. So if you're doing a push-up and you can find that you come all the way through further than most people, 
it's important that when you do a push up that you take it through that range to its completion wherever that might be for you. And I think one of the stigmas associated with being able to hyperextend your knees or hyperextend your elbows is that if you consistently do that, that it's bad for your joints. And it's hard to say whether it is or it isn't, but what I can say is that if you have normal joint mobility and you consistently hyper flex or hyperextend that tissue, then there's potential to sort of damage or injure that joint. But if you're someone who has that natural range to work with, it's really important you explore that range with resistance or strength or muscular control exercises so your brain feels very safe and very comfortable moving into that range of motion. Because when you're not paying attention and you're not thinking about what you're doing, your body will move into the range that it has available to it. So it's really important that you can develop that control and that strength in the extreme ends of that range for yourself to protect the joint, make sure that it's stable while being more flexible than the next person. So I genuinely hope that was helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments down below as well what type of strength training or, or stability training or core strength exercises you might be doing to help reclaim some of that function. If you think it's worthwhile me going through that at some stage, please let me know. If enough people find that helpful, I'll develop a video based on some strategies that you can do to strengthen that, that extra range that you might be having. But ultimately, if you found that useful, please consider leaving a like rating down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Please leave a super thanks donation if you found this genuinely helpful as well. But with that being said, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.